Today we are going on a journey rebuilding the current worst team in England. Yes, I am talking about Forest Green Rovers. And honestly, if I can have any excuse to rebuild this team, I will take it. And today this squad is struggling. Let's take a look at the league table to realize that in the League 2, which is the lowest league that we have in FC24, Forest Green Rovers is last position with 19 points. Clearly is not good enough and it gives us a massive opportunity to dive into a rebuild of this team and build it up with a bunch of players I've never used before that then become legends and lift multiple trophies high into the sky. This is why I love doing these types of rebuilds where we take on teams that are extremely low rated and come up with unbelievable players in the process. So let's start off with... Forest Green Rovers. I hope you're excited because I truly believe these types of rebuilds are the best. Also, what the hell is wrong with this, this strand of hair in my face? Might as well just go that way. Much better. You disgust me. You're disgusting. So let's dive into the team. See what this squad has to offer because clearly it is not going too well as we speak. This is what we have right now. McCann is the highest player a highest potential player in the team as we speak for forest green rovers and that super high potential my friends is 70. there is another one in here actually his name is like welsh or something this guy or welk i don't know how to pronounce his name but this guy is the highest potential player in the team and there's a whopping difference between him and mccann and that is just plus one the guy has 71 potential but he's only on loan in this team so we can't necessarily rely on him so Clearly, we're going to be putting McCann into this CDM position and seeing what happens. I might actually go with this formation. What is it? The 4141? Yeah, let's go ahead and use this one. I haven't really used this one in a while. And we will be having one striker up top. And that position is going to be extremely important because he's the only attacker while the rest of the team is probably going to be doing a lot of defending and uh, passing the ball around <laughs> and hoping to not lose games. So what are we starting with in terms of the budget? We are looking at 1 million. Wow, so much money. Let me see the Youth Academy. Please, please have a gem in there. Nope, we do not have a gem in there. These guys are all trash. I cannot believe this. Actually, this Hassan guy, he should probably be better uh, in a different position. He does have decent dribbling, passing, and pace. So, let me see something here. Before we actually go ahead and see what that man's rating is, let's just quickly discuss the fact that Troy Deeney was the coach. Someone that was a coach and playing at the same time as well, because as we speak in FC24, He's actually part of the squad as a 35-year-old. But here we can see in 30 days in charge, in six games, he's had zero wins and one touchline ban. Troy Deeney is out of Forest Green Rovers. If you guys, anyone out there is a Forest Green Rovers fan, please let us know the state of your club right now. With Troy Deeney out, who has come in? What has happened? Let me know. So here we are with Hassan, Brahim Hassan. And we can also promote 15-year-olds into the team because they're good enough. Let's see what happens here. What does he go up to? 56. See, I knew it. Well, I saw those stats and I was like, yep, this guy is going to be more special than it shows initially. And he actually does have some decent potential on him as well. So Brahim Hassan could become an important piece of this team. Having said that, he's only 56 rated and I'm nearly falling off because I cannot keep my own balance. Uh, Mohamed is not going to be someone that we actually bring into the team. But this guy, Danny Alves, I mean... <laughs> I just should get him, shouldn't I? Because as we all know, Danny Alves is one of the most, what like the player with some of the most trophies in world football. The guy has won basically everything. So having basically a regen of him, not the Brazilian version, but the Portuguese version. Also, both of them speak Portuguese. So this makes so much sense. Let's bring Danny Alves into the squad. I didn't even pay attention to him because I was so focused on Hassan, but we do have two players now coming through the Youth Academy, and that actually comes up with a, a question mark in my mind. What do I now do with these players that are coming off the Youth Academy? By the way, Lavinier is going to be my left back. I'm going to be selling. I'm selling a bunch of players that are not in a starting 11 as we speak. I can show you guys what is happening here in the transfer window. As we go into the transfer history, you'll see a bunch of them have already left. Bunker, Bernard, Carter, all these, are, all these guys are gone. And others that are not in the starting 11 right now are being sold as well. 
because we do need that cash. Now, again, going back to the youngsters that we have brought in, I think ideally I need to loan these players out because I, I cannot give them the play time now. Even though they have some decent ratings, still they cannot make it into this squad. So let's go ahead and give them play time somewhere else. And hopefully somewhere down the line, they could become players for us to start. But to have a strong team, you need to go ahead and get yourself a strong goalkeeper that is going to be here for years to come. And this man right here is potentially the future of German goalkeeping alongside the likes of Noah Atubolu, who has recently started playing for Freiburg. This is Dennis Simon. This guy is the backup to Nübel at Stuttgart. So many people expect him to be the goalkeeper for them if they cannot keep a hold of Nübel, who still belongs to Bayern Munich. For me, this was the signing I wanted to make because Daniels right here is 35 years old and clearly, and by the way, this was something that someone suggested, that I should press triangle instead of picking a player and going down all the way here to find Simon. You can just go onto a player's position, press triangle, and it will show you the goalkeepers as suggested subs. I knew that feature existed, but for some reason, I just avoided it all the time. Surely I'm not the only one. Let me know in the comments if you didn't know about that one, or at least never used it as well. This next man walking into the club is apparently a huge talent. First transfer, goalkeeper. Next transfer, striker. I am going for the man that PSG is very interested in, apparently. Alan Obando, a player from SC Barcelona, a club in Ecuador. This guy is now becoming our striker. He could be a man to lead the line when we are chasing down trophies for years to come. He gets number 10 on his back. Interesting. Alan Obando is a player that also has quite high potential. He comes in with like 84 potential. I'm amazed. I really am because his rating is not that high. We are looking at a player that we brought in for 1.4 million, which I'm extremely happy about. Price rating is a B. That's good as well. Show me his actual rating right here, right now. He walks in with a 66 or 65, whatever it is. It is a 65. Obando, 69 pace, 59 shooting, 64 dribbling, 67 physicality. This guy is just pure talent. And that is what we want to have in a team like this. Apparently, he's the youngest player or one of the youngest players to be called up into the Commebol pre-Olympic tournament as well which is another thing that I just read up. So watch out for this kid. He could become a beast and we might use him before he actually becomes that beast. I still remember the day when we bought Haaland from like Molde or something and brought him into one of our teams and he was insane. Maybe Obando, who knows? Maybe he can have a similar trajectory. Not as good, but at least a decent one. So here we go. The first season has just finished. And all I want to see is that our team didn't finish anywhere at the bottom. Ninth. I will take that on board. 66 points. Much better than the situation in real life right now. And it's actually insane that you have to play 46 games a season in League 2. I love that actually because it helps your players to get goals, assists, all that stuff that helps them grow. So uh, they have multiple chance to do, chances to do so. And now, Obando, 71. Let's go, buddy. He was 65 rated when he came in. Uh, that is insane. So the rest of the team, let's not be too fussed about them, I guess I should say. Now, we do have Lavanier here in the left back position who has gone up to a 65. He's a young player here. McCann has gone up to a 63, but he's very unhappy. I don't like that. But Dennis Simon has gone up to a 65, and that's exactly what I wanted to see. So when it comes down to the players that we actually brought into this team, it has been good stuff. And in terms of performance here from Forest Green Rovers in the first season, we are looking at a center midfielder with the most goals. 17 and 4 from Reese Brown, the 28-year-old. Hopefully, we can sell him on for a decent fee next season. Obando with 14 and 12 in his first season in England and a plus 6. Can't say anything against that. He's going to be leading the line for years to come, so no issues there for the first season not being a top scorer. He did get the most goal contributions in the end. And then for the rest, pretty okay performances all around. But again, most of these players need to go. We need more money, more new players. So let's get to season two. The Eredivisie yeah, is always filled with amazing talents, and this is another one of them. Azad Alkmaar, the talent factory of the past few years. This 
is one of their big ones in that center back position. So for that reason, Valtajos is going to be joining us right here. Goes, Goes, however you pronounce his name. He is walking straight into the starting 11. An A in terms of price. And he walks in with possibly a 70, which is huge. 69 actually. 71 pace, 70 defending, 65 physicality on the boy, 6 foot 2 tall from Netherlands is going to be our Van Dijk. And this season I was given a budget of 4 million to play with and a couple of players have returned from their loans. Hassan returns as a 59 rated player and uh, Dani Alves, I don't see him. Oh, we loaned him out for two years. Okay, so Hassan has returned a little bit too early. I'm going to loan him out once more, but... Uh, Akayoko, this is a player that has returned. We can sell on some of these guys and hopefully cash in on them. But having said that, our squad size is very small. So I probably have to sign at least one more player before I can go ahead and start thinking about selling. Upamecano injured now. They least constantly injured, but now fit. Kim Min Jae at the Asia Cup. Eric Daya has been signed for Bayern Munich. And this is the one that they were hoping to have fit by now. Tarek Buchmann is a big talent, a very, very big talent from Bayern Munich and hasn't been able to get that play time due to an injury. And right now would have been his time. This would have been the point where he could have stepped onto the pitch for Bayern Munich and get that minute of play time at least. And right now we are looking at a kid that is walking straight into our team at Forest Green. He comes in for 840k. The price rating should be a good one. Yes, it is. And he comes in with a rating of 63, I assume, for this one. More Taylor gets taken out. Oh, he comes in with a 64. Love that. This guy is supposedly one of the biggest talents of German football for the defense. So I'm very excited to have him in our team right now. 19 years old only. And I think one of the sentences I made earlier on, like, he gets a minute of playtime. What am I? What am I talking about? Let's move on. And now we're finally grabbing ourselves a talent from Italy. This is a CDM. Yes, a defensive midfielder called Lipani. A six foot two tall lad. Luca Lipani is walking into the team for 800k. I sadly had to let go of Mekan. And it's not because I wanted to. It's because he actually joined Cluj at the end of the season without me noticing so, Bendel, I'm going to take you out, pal, and Lipani is going to go in there as the CDM. First of all, nice haircut. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look into his stats and realize he's 19, 6 foot 2 tall from Italy with good physicality. Not the best defending, but good dribbling, passing, pace, and all that good stuff. So, probably could be an even better center midfielder. But for us, he's going to be a CDM. And I got to... I gotta say, at some point, I want to change the formation. I want to play a 4-3-3. So ideally, I want to get wingers involved. Holland and McAllister are going to be here for now, but not forever. We're going to be going for right wing and left wing in the upcoming season. But for now, let's go ahead and see what Obando and the boys can do for this year. So now in 2025, how have things gone for Forest Green Rovers? First of all, oh, first of all, we are first. 111 points guys we are building the worst team into a future giant and right now getting 111 is amazing with only three losses in 46 games which is so impressive this team is going up with obando on a 78 wasn't he 71 at the start of the season that is insane then we have lipani up to a 68 right there in the cdm position goes or goes i'm just gonna call him goes from now on He's gone up to a 73. Buchmann, 68. Dennis Simon, 71. Our left back is up to a 71. An original of the team. You know what? He could be the original that sticks around until the end. I'm not against it. That'd be cool. But definitely next season, I'm going to be rolling with a 4-3-3 formation. So I'll show you guys right now what I want to play. It's not that much of a change, but it is a bit more attacking and it is a bit more exciting. So hopefully that's going to work out well for us. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look into who scored the most. I would assume it's Obando this time. Yes, it is. 35-8 and eight from the man from Ecuador. He is dominating as we speak. Garrick with 18-8. and eight. McAllister 15-8. and eight. And Brown once again, double digits when it comes to his goal contributions. And lads, this team has been impressive, was impressive this year. And now the question is, what can we do in League One? Can this team, with a few additions actually compete in there as well for the higher positions because 
I do feel like we can. It will come down to how much the budget is once again, if we can only sign one or maybe two players. Up next is a player that my dad has been suggesting me to look at in terms of upcoming young talent in world football. And this is Efe Akman. This is a player who is currently playing at Galatasaray alongside his brother. Yes, he has a brother at Galatasaray already who is 20 years old. He is 19. Both are expected to be massive talents. My dad is telling me that this kid is the next big thing out of Turkey, possibly. So we are bringing Efe Akman into the team. Price rating A, and he will be playing in that center midfield position. Yes, it does say he's a CDM, but in center midfield, he's even better. See, it gives him a plus four right there. So Brown, thank you for everything you've done, but I am going for Efe Akman in this position. 77 pace on him, 61 shooting, 69 passing, 17, uh, 76 dribbling. Actually, he's just as good as a right wing. He does have decent shooting. Do I want to... Nah, I want to use him as a center mate. I want to use him in the position that he's supposed to be in. I've actually seen him play a little bit down the wings as well. He apparently has been doing really well for the uh, youth teams of Galatasaray. So he is now part of the main squad as well, getting a little bit of play time here and there possibly. But Akman is here. I'm not going to bring in his brother, but still, I'm pretty happy with this signing. Now that I said it, though, I kind of want to buy his brother, too. Up next is a player that is wanted by West Ham. Yes, my friends, this is a left winger that I'm bringing into the team right now. And his name is Ibrahim Osman. He has turned down offers from Brighton and Brentford in favor of a move of West Ham. Why would you turn down Brighton? The only reason behind that would probably be that he thinks he doesn't get playtime. But here we go. Nordsjaland is producing yet another incredible player. And honestly, if people aren't paying attention to Nordsjaland by now, I don't know what you're doing with your life. They are bringing up some incredible talents, specifically from Africa. Multiple of them that are being wanted by a lot of European clubs instantly. So he walks straight into this team at a... What? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Left wing. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? We actually let go of McAllister in, in this deal. He comes in with a 71 rating, same as McAllister, but at least he is an actual left wing. 84 pace, 77 dribbling, decent amount of shooting, no play styles. But remember the name because this kid could be becoming a big one down the line. I kind of hope, though, that he doesn't join West Ham. I don't know why, but for me, I have a feeling like West Ham doesn't necessarily help players become better. But having said that, that's just not true. There have been so many good ones coming out of there, too. So who knows? Maybe Osman is going to be a good one. I can tell you right now, there are a couple of incredible talents coming out of Turkey as we speak, and I'm proud of them. So right now, I'm going to bring in one that has become a special player this season, a player that showed glimpses last season but this season for Besiktas he is one that fans truly believe in this is Semi Kuluçsoy this kid could be the next big thing coming out of Besiktas specifically but he is now becoming a player of our squad an A on the price he is ranked as a striker but from what I know for Besiktas he has been playing down the wings and I'm going to put him into that right wing position which he can also play oh he gets an upgrade there. That's lovely. So 82 pace, 68 shooting. So this is definitely going to be someone that is going to score a lot of goals from that position. 61 passing, 69 dribbling, 66 physicality, high attacking work rate, only 19 years old as he joins us right here. So technically speaking, take two years off. That's how old he is in real life right now. He's 17. So Turkish fans have a lot of hope in him and multiple others. We are genuinely building an incredible generation of talents right now. And I'm so excited about them. So hopefully it's going to go all well. And he's going to join in. Akman there in the center midfield. And Kulic Soy in right wing. I really like what we are building at the moment. And I believe I haven't used any of these players. Osman, Obando, Kulic Soy, Akman. I have not used Lipani either. Those I might have used somewhere, maybe last season, but not on FC24. And same goes for Simon. May 2026 season's over and Forest Green is going up again. Yes, the League One was no match. Plymouth are going up alongside us. Two teams over 100 points. Both have lost six games only this season. That is impressive. Third position has lost 12. So you can see the gap right there. Mind the gap. But you see, you see Osman on a 75. You see Obando, 84. The man now has potential to be special. That is all his work. Kulicsoy gone up to a 73. And look at Akman. 
When I change this position to a center mid, with a center mid, which I actually forgot for half a season, he went from like a 69 to a 74. So when you guys are changing positions and it tells you it only takes like two weeks, if you do it later than that, they might actually get an even bigger jump in overall rating because I thought it was only going to be like a plus two. But it was way more than that. And he now is a ridiculous player. Lipani 73, Maddox, the next one to be replaced in this team. Davinier, you're going to stick around, pal. I'm actually going to go ahead and give him the captaincy because he's probably going to be remaining the only one that stays in this team from the original squad. Then you have Buffman on the 72. Those is way higher rated. And yes... Danny freaking Alves is in this team. Yes, the youth academy talent that we found earlier on has made it into the team, while Hassan now has turned into a backup player. Simon up to a 78. Love the fact that we have Danny Alves as a right back, man. What are the odds of that happening? Let's go ahead and take a look into who has gone, uh, gone and gotten himself the uh, golden boot, possibly. Of course, it's Obando. Of course, it's him. Akayoko, though, off the bench. The man from Sierra, Le Sierra Leone has come in with 18 and 1. Semi first season, 13 and 2. Efe Akman with the 11 and 7. Maddox, once again, good season. Osman has done quite well as well. So things are looking very good, guys. And going up into the championship with a team like this and with a little bit more money. He could do some damage. This next player I've brought in, you won't see the cutscene, but he's supposed to be the next big thing in midfield from Netherlands. This is Tygo Lant. He's coming in from PSV Eindhoven. PSV is apparently going to be losing Joey Vierman, who has decided to not extend his contract with the team. He's one of the midfielders in Europe that has created the most chances. So definitely a bunch of teams are going to want to bring that man in. Tygo Lant is now 20 years old, 5 foot 9 tall. I have been told by my community on SoRare, people that watch football constantly, that he is going to be one to watch in the future. The next Joey Vierman. That is what people expect him to be. So for that reason, I brought him into the team instead of Maddox. He takes over with that 74 rating and fits in straight away into that left center midfield spot for our team. And I was only given 10 million, so I cannot really necessarily go out there and buy a bunch more players, especially due to the fact that these players are going to be wanting more money, more wages. The 10 million is going to be gone very quickly. Lads, we are in the conference, not conference, in the playoffs. And now we beat Norwich and we're up against Sheffield. So I assume that means we came in in the playoff positions for promotion into the Premier League. We came in third with a seven point gap. Just that left us in that third position as Luton Town and Leicester City are going up. But I'm still very impressed. I have to say, I, I really love this team right now. I'm loving what we're building with this Forest Green Rovers side. And ratings wise, everything looks amazing. Who's the lowest rated one? It's Danny Alves with the 76. Ah, that's going to be okay. The rest of the team actually looks fire. Stats wise. Obando, of course. College Soy, see, I told you the guy has good shooting stats and he shows it right there. Akman with 9 and 8 from center midfield. Tigerland with a 9 and 2. Akaoko off the bench once again. Osman with a 5 and 8. And now the moment of truth. Are we spending another season in the championship or are we going ahead and beating the Sheffield United side to get promotion into the Prem and get that big money? Yes, we are! Osman and Semi have done it. The comeback, they were leading and they bottled it. We are going up into Premier League football. So you probably thought, oh, he's going to take that Premier League money and go crazy with it. Well, you were wrong. I trusted the team. I did, and it paid off. Forrest Green in the fifth position. I mean, this is insane. We have lost the final game of the season against Arsenal, who are in second, but... We were only three points off of Champions League football. Our goal difference is not the best, I'll admit. We have lost 11 games. We only scored 58 goals and conceded 50. That is not ideal. So I don't know how we actually made it into the top five. That is ridiculous to me, considering uh, the goal difference. But Obando is on a 93. He's probably carrying the team alongside Simon and Goes as well. The rest of the boys are chasing those players in terms of rating, which is just incredible. Now, I will bring in a bunch of players onto the bench in the next season. You'll see them all at once. But for now, 
I can't believe we got us Europa League football. This is just nuts. And Obando in 44 games. And we're talking like highest level of football. He managed to get 38 goal contributions. This guy is the next Haaland that we have just put into the league. He is from Ecuador. He's 21 years old. And he's competing for that golden ball. Kulic Soy with the 14 and 3. Osman with the 8 and 3. The rest of the boys have not contributed as much. Having said that, Akman got nine assists. So looking at that, I also want to see the player stats real quick. This is not something I normally do, but Obando came in second behind Phil Foden. Phil Foden scored 28 goals. My God, GG's, man. Well done. But having said all that, guys, we are now in an incredible position. Just got promoted. Now we have Europa League football and we're going to Europe. So I did fill up the bench and right now we're looking at Rykov coming in from Borussia Dortmund. Sonko for the wing. The man has 90 pace. Hassan is still there. Godot is still there. And then we have Laurin Ulrich, a man that actually jumped in my, into my Twitch stream for some reason. That was so fun to see. Then we have Brown in here still from the original squad and Slot Saga. Has joined us as well, a centre-back with 79 pace at this stage, 22 years old from Denmark. So pretty happy with the pickups that we have brought in into this season. We were given a budget of 100 million, so I was able to bring these guys in and still leave myself with around 20 to deal with the wages and everything. Season's done. We are at the end of 2029. Yes, so far into the future and sadly got kicked out in the Europa League by Ajax. But hopefully we have qualified for Champions League football. We've won the league. We won the Prem. Forest Green, worst team in England, now is the best. Yes, that's what we are. So that is amazing. A huge achievement. One of the things that I wanted to tick off the list and we have pulled it off. It's a close one though. Just one on the goal difference. Just one made a difference. They have 24. We have 25. West Ham was on 21 with 73 points and Manchester United only four points away as well. So that is huge. I love that. FA Cup, we weren't in there. Carabao Cup, we weren't really taking part in it. And we already have seen what happened in the Europa League. Obando is a 96 rated player. Oh my God, bro. This guy's going to be insane. I cannot wait to use him. His passing is trash, but the rest is incredible. Kalitsoy up to an 87. Osman 87. Midfielders all at least 86. Defense. Lowest rated is Dani Alves with the 85. Goalkeeper on a 90. Players on the bench looking solid as well. It's about time. Yes, next season is the one. I can feel it because this team is going to be insane by then. I am calling it right now. Next season, we are in the Champions League final. Yes, this team is too good to not get there. And I know for a fact these guys are going to keep on growing. And that's going to make this team look even more ridiculous. And Obando, 33 and 8. Osman, 20 and 10. Kulic Soy, 15 and 4. Taigo with the 9 and 6. Efe Akman with 4 and 6. And even our center backs are scoring goals. Forest Green Rovers is going for all the trophies next year we had a lucky draw in the first match in the champions league knockout stages it was real sociedad then it is manchester united and after that as roma and forest green rovers i told you they would pull it off this season i want to see at least a double because i'm not seeing any cup competition right here and that is bothersome by leverkusen again bro by I love that. I absolutely love the fact that they have become this strong in the game as well. Because obviously, in real life, everyone knows now that Bayer Leverkusen is having an incredible season. The fact that they're doing well in here as well is huge. Obando up to a 98. Bro, I can't remember the last time I had someone this high rated. 98. That is insane. Wow. I, I mean, yeah. Okay, let's continue. Kulitsoy 89, Osman 89, Land on an 88, Lipani 89, Akman on an eight, on a 90. Alves, who was the lowest rated player, has actually overtaken Tarek Buchmann. Interesting. He's now on an 89 as well. Danny Alves, let's go. Dennis Simon on a 91. Lavinier, the captain, the original on a 90. I didn't plan on having an original in here by the end of this, but now we do. And I want to see, have we won the Prem? Please, double, double, double. Yes! Double opportunity is there. Forest Green, first position. But, lads, it doesn't mean anything. The double isn't guaranteed. 
you've seen me fail in Champions League finals many times before. So hopefully today that is not going to happen. Let's take a look into the stats of the players. I want to see 40 plus goal contribution. Of course, 58 games, 51 goal contributions. Alan Obando is a beast. Kulic Soy with his best season as well. 44 goal contributions in 54 games. Osman with 16 and 13. Sonko off the bench with 11 for himself. Lipani in the CDM position has jumped in as well. Taigo with the 7 and 6. Ulrich 7 and 5. And Efe Akman once again is the man with the most assists. 17. This team that we have built, man, it is exciting. I cannot wait to jump into a game right now and see what we can pull off against this Bayer Leverkusen side right here. Davin Nunez. Okay, Aurier, Kasim, Iran Kunda, the new Bayern Munich talent, Baturina, Bruno Guimaraes in midfield with Frimpong on the right. Munz, or Munz, sorry, is in the centre-back position. Don't know him. Interesting. Araujo, next to Teixeira and Karneseki in goal. That is some team, you know. It's going to be interesting to play against that for sure. The 3-4-3 three, three formation as well is a tough one to deal with. And Darwin... It's just going to cause chaos. I'm actually so excited to see how a 98 rated striker plays. It's been a while since I've had anyone reach that heart, those ty type of heights. But here we go now against Bayer Leverkusen. And I also obviously want to see what the rest of the team can do. A bunch of extremely talented players, which not most people might know of. So I'm really happy that we were able to build this team into one that is world class. But... To be able to lift that trophy, it takes more than just being world-class. And immediately, first touch of the striker is the loss of the ball. Nice steal. Over and across to Osman. Into Obando's feet. The strike is coming off of his foot. And immediately, the main man with the number 10 on his back runs across to his coach to celebrate the man who thought he could build him up into a world-class striker was just rewarded with this beautiful finish from Obando. Hey, PSG are apparently looking to sign a top player in him. So good luck, Obando. Hopefully your career turns out to be incredible. Nunez again. I'm trying to put in a tackle. The tackles are deflecting and we are giving them too much space. I tried to switch players. It didn't work. Kasim scores for Leverkusen. It is 1-1. Right before halftime, five minutes to go. Well done, Leverkusen. Last minute of the game, Leverkusen get a corner. Do we go into extra time or is this game done? Right here now. Bicycle kicks and everything. And we finally get the ball off into Simi's feet as we go into extra time. Ackman into Simi's feet. Cross whipped in towards Obando. Lipani, strike off Tioland or Taigo, whatever his name is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he is technically gifted and just goes with the straight volley into top bins. This goal could win us everything. Let's take another look at it right now. I need to see the technique on that one. Look at it. Cross comes whipped in. And he just straight away, he's right there taking the shot. He doesn't hesitate at all. The boy was built for this moment. Solid tackle from our number six. Across to Osman. Nice first touch. And there goes Lanz into a bundle. First touch football. And our striker this time will just blast it into the top right corner. 98 rated and now winning us the Champions League. But I have to say... Sigoland, who gets the assist for this one, is the best and most impactful player in today's match. What a pass that is. Generally speaking, down the left-hand side, the build-up starting off with Lavigne and Osman into land and then Obando. He is the only one that can be chased by two and still keep the composure to smack that in. Yeah, you might get one more back, but it doesn't matter. It's 3-2. Game's done. The original of the squad. The left back, Lavinier, is going to be lifting this trophy. Leverkusen tried their best, but their best was not good enough to match our players' abilities. Thank you guys so much for watching this rebuild. I had a ton of fun recording it. Recording with teams that are low rated is just so much more fun. And hopefully it's a more enjoyable watch for you too as we build 
some low-rated ones into incredible world-class players. Thank you so much for watching this. Forest Green Rovers now, Champions League winners and Premier League winners. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.